What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to estimate or even measure the runtime complexity of functions or algorithms in Python so let us get right into it. All right, now for those of you who don't know what the runtime complexity of an algorithm is, the basic idea is that it tells us how much more time the algorithm needs or how many more operations it has to do uh, to solve the problem when we increase the input size. Now, to give you a simple example of this, let's say we have a function return first element. And what I give to that function is a list of values. So I have a list of values here. And what this function basically does is it just returns the first element. So it returns LST zero. Now this function has constant runtime complexity. It doesn't matter how large the list is, I'm going to get the first element in the same amount of time. It's not more difficult if I have a million elements uh, or if I have two elements. It's basically the same because I just get the first element and I return it. So that is constant runtime complexity. If I do something like return or let's say max element off a list, then maybe I would do something like iterating over the list. So for element in list, um, I could say current max is equal to the first element by default. And then I can just say if element is larger than current max, then I can say current max is the element. And in the end, I return the um, current max. Now, this would have a linear runtime complexity. Why? Because if I have a list of five elements, I take a certain amount of time. If I add one additional element, I have to check one additional element. So it's a linear scale. One more element means one more check. Um, and because of that, that's a linear runtime complexity. Now, this is not always the case. For example, if I have to find certain pairs of numbers, maybe I have to go through each element in combination uh, with every other element. So maybe I have something like a qu quadratic runtime complexity, uh, or I can get even into exponential runtime complexity and so on. So if you want to have more details on this, you can watch my algorithms and data structures uh, course or tutorial series. It's for free on YouTube, but that's the basic idea. And now we have a package in Python, an external Python package called Big O that allows us to basically measure and um, approximate the runtime complexity. Now, of course, if you actually want to know the runtime complexity of an algorithm, you have to analyze it yourself, you have to look at it, you have to see what it's doing and calculate or um, derive the worst case runtime complexity. But you can also sort of approach the runtime complexity by running the same function with different input sizes and see how they change. And then you can uh, say, okay, this is probably linear, this is probably quadratic, and so on. And this is what the package does. So we're going to open up the command line, and we're going to say pip three install big underscore O. And the idea is quite simple. So let's say I'm going to import um, big O. Let's say I have a function, actually, I'm not going to even implement it, I'm going to use the max function from Python, the max function from Python, basically just returns the maximum element off a list. So you will see it gets uh, it, it prints 12 here, because 12 is the largest element of the list. And basically, this is linear runtime complexity, because you have to check every element, and then you can return the maximum element, unless you have a sorted list, then of course, just pick the last one. But if it's not sorted, you have to go through the individual elements. All right, so this should have linear runtime complexity, how can we test this function? Now, what we have to do, basically, is we just have to define a generator, the generator will generate in this case, now, a list of values, a random list of values. So we're going to say here, positive integer generator is going to be equal to lambda n n is going to be the input size. And we're going to say big O dot data gen dot integers. And we're going to say we want to have n integers from zero to uh, 100,000. So we basically say this generator will get an input n, and it will generate n integers, a list of n integers, ranging from zero to 100,000. Now, this is going to be our function that generates the values for our measurement. And the measurement itself will be done like this, we can say best and others is going to be equal to big O dot big O, and we're passing the function. Now, this can be a function that we ourselves have written, or it can be a built in Python function like max, for example, and then we pass the generator. And we say how many times we want to repeat, the more you repeat, the more accurate your result is going to be because you just have uh, less randomness or more consistency. And if I run this now, you can see I get nothing because I have to, of course, um, 
print the best. And what I will get here is the approximation that it's linear. So basically, it, re it repeats the process five times, it conducts different measurements with different ends. So it starts with a small n, it goes uh, to larger n or vice versa, uh, the other way around. And it compares the different input sizes with the different, um, with the different amount of time it takes. And then it says, in this case, I assume this is linear, and it actually tells us even what it thinks that this linear is. So it has some, uh, yeah, very small number times n, because it's quite fast. Um, now, let's go ahead and do that for a customized function. Now, a simple customized function would be just to see that we can get um, a different result as well as we can say that we want to define a function find max delayed. And the magic behind this function, it's going to be quite trivial. We're basically going to do the same thing, we're going to return the max element of a list. So we're going to get a list, and we're going to return max list. But before that, we're going to say time sleep two. So every time this function is called, we're going to wait for two seconds, do nothing basically. And this will be a constant that we add to our runtime. So the library should recognize that every time I run the function, I have a constant waiting time of two. And then depending on the input size, I have a linear growth. So it should be something like the runtime complexity is O off to be precise two off n or two off something times n something very small times n, but the two is a constant. So it should be linear. Um, all right, so we can do that, we can just replace your defined max delayed function. But since this is now going to take a little bit longer, we're going to, uh, we're going to say repeats is just one, so we don't have to wait too long here. And then we can run this and we can hopefully see that it's going to give us a linear runtime complexity. And it's going to hopefully recognize that there is this constant factor too. And we can even go further, I'm not going to do this now, because this will take much, much longer. But if you have something like time sleep for every element, so if you define your own function, where you iterate uh, over the elements, and for each element, you wait two seconds. And in this case, now it says uh, constant time two. this should not be the case, let me rerun this. Um, by the way, if you're not satisfied with the result, you can also look at the others This basically ranks all the other alternatives. If it's not constant, for example, the second best option would probably be linear uh, with a constant factor, but I have ran this exact code before. So it should at some point probably return um, linear. But probably this this um, okay, now it says polynomial time. Let's do one more time. Um, and probably repeating more often will give you a more satisfying answer because then you can contrast it more to the different scenarios or to the different iterations. Um, maybe I'm going to do that with a smaller number if this doesn't work right now. But basically, you can also get something like O of 2n. Now it tells me quadratic time, but at least it recognized the the two constant here. But let's go ahead now and turn this to 0 0.5 and then maybe repeat this twice just so we can see if this works then. Otherwise, we're going to move on with the other functions, you can trust me, I at least uh, at some point, I, I got a linear with two plus something of n, there you go. Now we get one plus, okay, doesn't make a lot of sense. But maybe this is uh, not the best example here, we can get more uh, interesting examples. And I have prepared here to be precise, two different sorting algorithms, I'm going to just copy paste them. The reason I'm copy pasting them and not coding them here is because this video is focused on the big O uh, package, we're not going to focus on the different sorting algorithms, because I have videos on both of them in theory and an implementation. So you can watch these videos if you want to understand how they work. We have bubble sort and merge sort. Again, if you want to know how the implementation works, go to my channel, type in bubble sort type in merge sort, you're going to find the videos. But we're now going to just estimate the runtime complexity and the runtime complexity of the merge sort is uh, linear rhythmic or pseudo linear. So it's basically n log n. And the runtime complexity of the bubble sort is quadratic. So it should or at least something polynomial, uh, because it's always the worst case complexity that we're talking about. Uh, but we can basically go and say, uh, generate the same numbers. But then what we want to do is for the merge sort, we can leave it like this. So we can just say merge sort with five repetitions. Um, and then we're going to do bubble sort, bubble sort, 
with n repeats equals um, one, or actually no, we can do five, but we're going to make smaller instances because otherwise this will take too long. So we're gonna say actually that the bubble sort will have a max underscore n of 5,000. Or maybe we can even start smaller to see if we get a result immediately. And then we can print best. So let's run this, let's see what, what happens now. Basically, we should get for merge sort linear rhythmic, we get linear for the merge sort, uh, which doesn't make a lot of sense, actually. So let me again, rerun this. Now, the problem is that sometimes you can get, um, yeah, there you go, linear rhythmic. The problem is sometimes you can get a better runtime complexity, because the worst case runtime complexity is linear rhythmic. Uh, if everything works out better than expected, you can also have a better than uh, linear rhythmic or better than quadratic runtime complexity if you have a good example to work on or a, a an easy example to work on, an easy problem to work on. Uh, but in this case now we got the correct answers, linear rhythmic and quadratic time with the estimation of the exact uh, numbers. Again, the more repetitions you make, the more time you spend on evaluating this, the more accurate the result will usually be. In this case, I had to run it two times. We can run it another time. Let's see if we get the correct results. Um, but yeah, this is basically how you can do that. Now we get polynomial time, this should not be the case. Let's run this again. Linear rhythmic time quadratic time. Okay, so I guess increasing the repetitions and increasing the problem size or the measurements in general, uh, will be will be something that will make this more accurate. Now what I want to show you now also is I want to show you a uh, an exponential runtime complexity, which is what you get when you try to solve the Fibonacci sequence, or when you try to get a Fibonacci number, uh, the nth Fibonacci number uh, in a recursive manner. Now I have made a video about this as well. So I'm going to just copy paste this. Uh, it's actually quite simple, you have a Fibonacci number position that you want to know, if it's zero or less than zero, you get zero, if it's one, you get one. And for all other cases, you recursively call the function two times, leading to two calls per call. So you have to basically, you have an exponential runtime complexity, because for each call, you're calling two times. Um, so that should give us an exponential runtime complexity. Now for this problem, where we cannot go with the uh, with the integer generator here, because we're not interested in generating uh, a collection of numbers, we're interested in generating a single number. So what you have to do here is you have to say number generator, and you can either define your own function, for example, you can say lambda n is going to just return n. It's as simple as that. Or if you want to, you can also use from big O data gen just n. This is also a possibility. Um, and then we can just say Fibonacci. And we can say, that we want to get uh, the number generator here as the generator. And now we need to say, okay, the repetitions, uh, we can leave that at five, but we want to have uh, only small values, because I think already 35 or something is quite difficult. So we're going to go with uh, min n. So the minimum number of n is going to be one, because by default, it's 100, as far as I know. And max n is going to be 30. We don't want to go above 30. We want to keep it low here, because it should be enough to understand that this grows exponentially. So we can run this. And hopefully, there you go exponential time. And we get this for the Fibonacci uh, recursive approach. And this time it seems to be quite accurate. There you go. It's very hard to miss that this is exponential, because this is literally exponential. It's not worst case exponential, it's it's exponential, because every time we're calling two functions. Um, all right, then last but not least, I want to show you a constant function that's actually constant. Let's do something simple, like we want to square a number n, what we can do is we can just return n to the power of two. And then we can pass square here. And basically, we can remove all these limitations. And we should get that this is a constant time because it doesn't matter how large the number is, it will just square it and return it. So that's quite simple. 
So yeah, even though it will not always give you the perfect answer, even though you will have to probably increase the repetitions and the timings and so on. This is quite a nice package if you don't want to analyze your library or, or not your library, your function yourself, or if you did analyze your function yourself, but you want to also make sure that this is actually what you get when you measure the time. Uh, this is a very nice function that can easily do that for you. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.